After countless days of the stock market rising, we see stocks dropping after some honest information revealed trade talks between the US and China were not going well on every front. Previously, we had seen unconfirmed sources suggesting massive progress, causing stocks to rise. Then the information from confirmed reports from higher level individuals proving otherwise, stocks didn't decline. So there has been a huge amount of positive pricing success for the US into this and it's going to be very bad if they don't get what they're expecting. You came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what has happened with the US and China and show you all the details up to date right now. We're going to look at the LIBOR rate. I want to cover what's happened with one of the FANG stocks as well. So let's begin by taking a look at the markets. Take a look at the right hand side, you can see the US markets all in the red for the day. The Dow Jones fell 220 points by the end. I just wanted to highlight this as I mentioned in the introduction, the markets have priced in all of the possible positivity of a good trade deal. They're expecting that. If they fall short in any respect, then you can see that stocks will decline, at least in the short term. Now the Federal Reserve could turn it around, they could print some money, they could reduce some interest rates and get that going again. But at least in the short term, this is obviously going to have a negative impact simply because the markets are forward looking and they see that potential and they already price it in before the event happens. That doesn't mean that necessarily if something positive happens that the markets won't rise, but a lot of that has been priced in already. So that's what I wanted to show you here. We're going to look further into the details of what has happened just to give you an idea to keep you up to speed. At one point today, the Dow Jones was falling more than 350 points before reversing and it ended up being 220 points down at the end of the day. Now the information I really wanted to get to was in the bottom paragraph and it begins with this. CNBC learned through a source that a meeting between the two leaders was highly unlikely. But of course, this is a quote source and we've seen that before but we want somebody high level to be mentioning this type of information or else its validity is just not present and I think that it's important to take it with a grain of salt. China and the US have until the start of March to strike a trade deal otherwise additional tariffs on Chinese goods will take effect. I think it's important to look at this because what they're looking at today is a very short period of time and from what I understand from what I gather the progress simply is not there so we'll look further into this in the next article here there's a pretty sizable distance to go before the US and China reach a sweeping trade agreement that's according to the White House economic advisor. And I do think it's important to see when you have these high level individuals, see what they say. But again, you need to understand their insistence on propaganda. A day earlier, the Treasury Secretary, Mr. Goldman Sachs, Stephen Munchkin, said that the talks have been very very productive, although he noted that a wide range of issues remains to be worked out. That's right. In fact, we've talked about this before when they had their meeting together that the issues from the very beginning are still present today because it's not just about tariffs. There's a lot more that is happening right now. Tariffs are just what's making its way into the media and obviously it has an impact. There's no doubt about that. However, they're talking about everything from top to bottom. There's a bad going on between both sides and I do believe it's important to focus specifically on what you're seeing out there and what information comes from individuals like the US Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer who has made some comments before and I just think that there's a lot going on here and most of it most of it is propaganda but at least we know specifically that they are nowhere near completion so my thoughts on 
this are that we're gonna get a little bit, a little piece of news that's gonna come out and just delay the issues. I don't know if there's going to be any huge swings in where we are today to where we need to be in order for this to be positive. I really don't think so. I think that both sides are going to have to really give and they don't wanna do that. Both sides wanna win, they wanna look good, they wanna seem like they've won this battle somehow and they're just not gonna let all the tariffs go. They're not gonna just concede to the other side on the hundreds of other issues that they need to discuss. It just probably doesn't happen. Now, Mr. Goldman Sachs, Mr. Little Munchkin, if you remember back here, 2017, it was uh, quite funny, so I figured I'd bring it up again. He just wanted to extend his thank you for Fort Knox having let him in, and he is confident, absolutely confident, that the gold is safe. And everybody, I think everybody at this point knows there's probably no gold in Fort Knox, or there's much, much less than what they say there actually is. But regardless, nobody seems to mind because the gold is safe, according to Mr. Goldman Sachs. Well, that's fine. Let's just cover this one issue before we move on to the others. Having this issue present right now starts to have a snowball effect. And in the second paragraph, the technology sector weighed on stocks as fears of a global slowdown were rekindled after the EU cut its economic growth forecast. The European Commission said the growth will slow to 1.3% this year from 1.9% in 2018. So you have this cascading effect. You hear about one piece of news, it adds to the other piece of news, it adds to the other one, and then stocks tumble. And then there's the buy the dip, you have the plunge protection team, which tries to push that up towards the end of the day. Usually you see a recovery that occurs typically at the end of the day. That's the way they do it. But regardless, I just wanted to give you an idea of what we could see in the coming days, or just in general, helpful to see these patterns that take place. Now, I want to switch gears for a moment here to talk about something I think is extremely important. Obviously, interest rates being an issue, not just for the Federal Reserve, but look at the LIBOR. It is called LIBOR, L-I-B-O-R, but really it should be spelled L-I-E-B-O-R. But We've seen the manipulation of the LIBOR. They got caught. Nothing even changed, but it's okay. Three-month LIBOR sees the biggest drop since 2009. By the way, the three-month is generally considered to be the benchmark, the one that we look at. Now, this just basically shows us that it's moved down to a level. If you look at it on the chart, which I'll show you in a second, it may not seem excessive at all, but it is the biggest drop since 2009. And this happens to coincide with what we are seeing out there where other central banks around the world have started to either drop their interest rates or suggest they're going to keep them there and look to reducing them in the future. We are already at historic lows or near historic lows and my goodness they're going to try to stimulate this dead carcass even further. It is unbelievable. It's a zombie no matter where you look. You look at the corporations, you look at the governments, they're all all bankrupt and they took on more than they could handle in the financial crisis. Many people keep talking about the replacement for the LIBOR rate that's coming, but I need to highlight what's happening today, and that is there are over $200 trillion worth of financial instruments being traded using a LIBOR every single day. You have to understand that. We don't want to look into the future of something that's going to come up, we want to focus on where it's at today, and the LIBOR is still very important. So for this cycle, it's important. Next cycle might not be the case, right? So we're, we're looking at what we have in front of us right now. So let's look at the chart, and you can see the three-month LIBOR, and that shows us there has been a decline throughout 2019. Basically, the start of the year when everything started to come down, the LIBOR rate was reduced, and this actually doesn't even include the one I just mentioned. This information is from the end of January. So this actually 
has continued to drop even further. If I zoom in, I could probably give you a better look at this just to see where we're at as of the video. I'm showing you this in early February, but remember this last date here being January 31st. Just take it for what it is. Essentially, as soon as the market started to decline, here is December 24th, then the LIBOR rate began to fall. And is it a coincidence? No, of course, this is what they do. They need to make it easy for all of these financial companies to spend money, take more debt, and gamble, gamble, gamble. This right here is the LIBOR just showing you going back all the way to the financial crisis, how significant this drop was. I just wanted to give you that. My friends in India, loans get cheaper. You can see that they have reduced the repo rate from 6.5% to 6.25%. It's the first rate cut since August of 2017. I believe I covered that at the time, but regardless, what we are seeing today is that these financial assets cannot withstand even reasonable levels of interest. You look around the world and I could say some places are negative. Some places are, for example, in India, 6.25%, but it depends on the country, right? We are just looking at it on a historic level for that particular country. And in this case here, we're moving down further and further and further. This is all of the statistics in the image if you're interested in checking that out. But I do believe that they are expanding these bubbles further and further and they are not willing to deal with the consequences and that only makes things worse down the road. People don't really care about that. They think they'll be able to time it and such, but almost nobody ever times it properly. So you would be part of the minority, that's for sure. And last but not least, what we have are these corporations that always seem to benefit. And it's not corporations that are operated by the person person that lives down the street in the corner house with the pool, we're talking about these corporations. Netflix paid nothing in federal or state taxes in 2018, despite posting record profits of $845 million and even got a $22 million rebate. Isn't that wonderful? Americans, you should be proud because you're able to ensure that Netflix is well taken care of. That's funny. That's the way it works though. These massive corporations lobby the government to ensure that they are always, always getting the best deal for them. And we have companies like Goldman Sachs that have everything under control in these governments. And it doesn't surprise me at all to see this when it does happen. So that's all for this video. I just wanted to get into the details that we're seeing today and the potential issues that are really waiting for us right around the corner. Nobody knows what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, but we're just waiting for a trigger event. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. You can support this channel by giving me a like on this. You can comment on it. And of course, if you're not a subscriber already, then I got to ask why you have to hit that subscribe button. I'm doing videos all the time. You're going to be notified of them. Make sure you click that little bell icon to increase the chances of seeing the videos as well. And last but not least, if if you want the financial education that was not taught to you in school intentionally, well then these two books have everything that you need. You can check them out at the link in the description. And if you want the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.